morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everyone. Welcome to Jubilee Circle this morning, and we're glad that you are joining us in the building. We're glad you're joining us out there. And this thing is still too ringy. I don't know what the... <laughs> now we'll do a ring. Sorry, we've got a little technical something going on here, and I, everything seems to ring in the room. That's a little bit better. All right. So uh, if you uh, need a bulletin, they're over there uh, near the near the lily this morning. So we have a nice lily that Jar Charles brought. Thank you so much for Thanks, our Easter lily. And if you are out there watching on YouTube, you can find it at uh, jubileecircle.com or just scroll down into the description and you will find a link for today's bulletin. Are we ready? Two, three, four. You can't tell me there's no mystery. Mystery. You can't tell me there's no mystery. It's a to start the morning for us. And, uh, huh? I know, I changed the key because it was too low. I was going, let it shine. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> no, it's at the bottom of your range. It's time to change key. So happy Easter, everyone. We are continuing our Via Creativa theme called Practicing the Resurrection. And A Course in Miracles tells us 
The resurrection demonstrates that nothing can destroy truth. So all this via, we're learning the art of practicing resurrection in our daily life. And that just means that we live in ways that demonstrate we understand that nothing in this world can destroy the truth of us, that we are created in love and peace and joy. And we strive to live into that truth in every moment of our lives. So yes, happy Easter. And this is the day that in most Christian churches, they begin their celebrations by saying, he is risen. And the crowd responds, he is risen risen indeed. Yes, so let's try it. He is risen. risen. Right, Jesus is risen indeed. And the only proof that you need is sitting right beside you or appearing on your screen for those who are watching remotely. Because you know it's true, you always are right next to or are seeing the Christ alive and well because that Christ is in each person. Each person that you see, each person that you think about, each person walking this planet. The Christ, that higher divine self of only love that we all possess since it's what created us, it did not die on a cross. Jesus himself, though he may have died in body, he did not die for our sins. The progressive Christians, of which I used to be a part, they used the crucifixion to point out how an unjust government prosecuted and killed an innocent man for having the temerity to preach love instead of hate. And that's true. But of course in miracles calls the crucifixion the last useless journey. Because we're not called to go out there and be crucified. That is a useless journey because it makes the suffering of this world real and it convinces us that we can die. Jesus' resurrection, his very, his still very real presence in the world in this moment proves that the Christ within us, that higher divine self, is eternal. But what does that mean for us today? It's a reminder that we can practice resurrection in our own lives in the only moment that matters, and that is right now. Jesus' resurrection reminds us that we are only love. We are created for and from nothing else. Our bodies may have stardust in them, but they house the entire universe, a vastness of love that seeks to be manifested and shared in the world. And the only moment that we can do that is right now. So this moment, jubilance. This is where the resurrection is because this is where eternity lives. And when we practice the resurrection of now, we become, we embody that love that makes the whole world want to say, Oh yeah. yeah. Please rise as you're able. And as we do at every Jubilee Circle, we begin our celebration by remembering the four elements. We remember the fire and the earth and the water and the air. And we burn sage as a reminder that this is a safe and a sacred time. It is a time to set our intention to love ourselves and to love the world. And it is time to set an intention for the world that they be receptive to that love on some level and know and know that they too are resurrected Christ walking around in the world. Let us turn and face the east. Holy One, just as the sun rises in the east, empower us to see and believe in new beginnings, to arise into each new day seeking new possibilities, new opportunities, and new worlds to explore. As we live through the fear and anxiety of this time, remind us that joy comes after despair, sunrise after the darkness, laughter after the tears. Refresh us this day, Holy One, and grant us your power to refresh the world. Quarter turn to the right, and we face the south. Help us, Holy One, to reclaim our creative power. Just as Jesus rose from the tomb on this Easter day, connect us with our own powers of resurrection from every little death we face in this life. Give us the power we need to walk from our tombs of despair and discouragement into the light of a new day. We're to turn to the right and we face the west. As another day draws to a close, Holy One, help us to accept our human limitations while at the same time embracing our holy creative powers. Help us to let go of anything that holds us back or keeps us from realizing the promises you have in store for us. Help us, Holy One, to stop resisting that natural urge to go and embrace our higher, whole, divine selves. Quarter turn to the right and we face the north. 
Holy One, we call to you from the north where wisdom and power reside. Forgive us when we fail to recognize and use the power that you have given us to bring joy and healing to the world. Renew in us a sense of awe, a sense of your presence that dwells within each of us. And as we turn back toward the center, I invite you to claim the power of resurrection this morning, to see yourselves as you really are, the beloved children of the still speaking, still living and forever loving God. In this time when crucifixion seems all too real in our own lives and the world, I invite you not to dwell upon the sorrow of the time, but be willing to seek joy in every moment. The joy that awakens from the tomb, lays aside the grave clothes, and emerges into the world saying, Oh yeah. Let's get everybody some sage here. Right. Coming around. Coming Let's around. go with it. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, everybody. Sage in the band. Everybody needs some sage this morning. Remain standing. We're going to sing a uh, Jackson Brown song um, about being alive in the world. <laughs> That's a good one, but I love this song. And I, I invite you to greet each other while we sing this song, but also to, I invite you to read the words of this song because it's, it is, I want to live in the world, not inside my head. You know, I want to stand and be counted with the hopeful and the willing, the open and the strong, the voices in the darkness, fashioning daylight out of song. That's what we are. We are here to sing that song of love no matter what. So, whew, it's a good song. It's a good song for Easter. Here we go. One, two, three, four. in the
the landing. All right. <laughs> That's all right. Who knows? It could have been my fault. It's all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome again to Jubilee Circle. We are so glad that you are here. Uh, we practiced everything but the landing. So. <laughs> all right. So welcome to uh, everyone who is here today. You know, usually uh, uh, Easter is our least uh, attended of the year, uh, other than Christmas sometimes, or the Christmas area, because everybody goes back to their families and celebrates Easter like at their childhood church or whatever. But hey, well, it's got a, got a nice crowd here today. So thank you all for coming for Easter. Happy Easter. We're happy to see you. We're happy to see Jubilee resurrect right here before the very end. It's alive. So welcome to those of uh, those who are visiting. We have a, uh, Anthony. Anthony is visiting today, and he is on the front row, man. <laughs> How does that happen? We're we're so glad to have you here, man. <laughs> you can't you can't hide in Jubilee, and he just embraced it. It's wonderful. <laughs> so a little bit about us today. We are an inclusive, progressive, interfaith community here in Columbia, South Carolina, broadcasting around the world. We teach the timeless common wisdom of love and unity that is found in all mainstream religions, in metaphysical philosophies, mysticism, inspired secular and religious writers and teachers throughout the ages. And we use popular music and teachings and weekly celebrations, educational and artistic events and other community building activities because we're trying to create a space for everyone to experience transformation so they can go out and be that transformation in the world. And we believe we're here to expand our souls, to find a deeper meaning in life, to renew our commitment to love and peace and justice, learn how to love wastefully and undergo a transformation from the inside out so complete that we walk around in the majority of our time living from that higher divine self. We also recognize we're part of God's good creation. We are formed in love and joy as well as stardust, but we forget this. We pop out into the world and we see this person over here and those people over there and then the judging starts and all the grievances begin. We believe in separation. We're lost in this world of paradox and we encounter others as beautiful or ugly or good or bad or generous or stingy or loving and, and just plain recalcitrant. recalcitrant. But let us remember. Our function here, Jubilance, is to remember that we are just extensions of God in the world. We have never left the heart and mind of God. And we are here to learn our lessons, to do our curriculum so we can awaken and remember who we truly are. We are the love that created us, and we are to be that in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hear these wise and holy words. And this wise and holy one. <laughs> the moment <laughs> give her a minute All right. <laughs> from a course in miracles the CE edition chapter 19 here is the holy place of resurrection to which we come again to which we will return until redemption is accomplished and received think who your brother is before you would condemn him and offer thanks to God that he is holy and has been given the gift of holiness for you Join him in gladness and remove all trace of guilt from his disturbed and tortured mind. Let us give redemption to each other and share in it, that we may rise as one in resurrection and not separate in death. Behold the gift of freedom that I, give, that I gave the Holy Spirit for both of you, and be you free together as you offer to the Holy Spirit this same gift, and giving it, Receive it of him in return for whatever you gave. He leadeth you and me together that we might meet here in this holy place and make the same decision. Free your brother here as I freed you. Give him the self-same gift and do not look upon him with condemnation of any kind. See him as guiltless as I look on you and overlook the sins he thinks he sees within himself. Offer each other freedom and completely re complete release from sin here in the garden of seeming agony and death. So will we prepare together the way unto the resurrection of God's Son and let him rise again to glad remembrance of his Father who knows no sin, no death, but only life eternal. From the letters of the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15:42 through 44. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, 
but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. And from the Sufi mystic poet Rumi, Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I will meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. These are wise and holy words. <laughs> Thanks be to the holy. All creation is holy word. All creation speaks volumes of the holy. Hallelujah. Let's stand and sing. Let's just vamp on that opening chord. And just remember, I want you to sing along. You've got your bullets in there. It's just an easy little chorus. We can sing it first if you don't know it and you can join in. I read. white people to sing <laughs> okay <laughs> all right I'm gonna make the band stay up here while I'm while I'm teaching cuz I'm gonna need them at the end <laughs> got an original song coming up you can, you can huh? where's your nap <laughs> Keith's not gonna get his nap in sorry uh, yeah Keith's not going to get his nap. Breathe deeply. <laughs> he, had a, he had a nap prepared. He was all ready to take it and have a good time. Uh, back in 2013, and I'm gonna, I've got Buddhist names to try to say in front of me this morning, so bear with me. <laughs> back in 2013, uh, Zojin Kenpo Chogo Rinpoche wrote to his students, say that three times fast, about the extraordinary passing of his teacher, Lama Karma Rinpoche. After his death, it was reported that Lama Karma's body 
had shrunk from his original five feet nine inches to about eight inches, reducing in size by nearly 80%. Rinpoche wrote, if his body continues to shrink and totally disappear, this miracle will be categorized as light body or atomless body. This light body can happen gradually or instantaneously, he writes, with or without an eyewitness. Another term for what Rinpoche was describing is a rainbow body. According to Tibetan Buddhist belief, this is what happens to the bodies of those who have, through meditation and other spiritual practices throughout their lives, have attained the supreme accomplishment of the Buddha in this very life. Now, there have been more than 180,000 documented cases of such rainbow body events taking place. One eyewitness in the mid-1990s was, was Father Francis Tizo. He saw the death of Buddhist monk Kempo Achos, and after his body was wrapped in burial cloth, the body began to shrink over the passage of seven days. His bones were shrinking, his facial features began to seem younger and younger, and there were rainbows appearing outside of his hut. Angelic voices sang from the ether, and the body began to smell of the most wonderful perfume, according to Tizo, who witnessed this. He's got a whole book about it. The appearance of rainbow bodies has been tracked back to the 8th century AD to, this is the hard one, okay, <laughs> Padma Sambhava. Padmasambhava. Padmasambhava. There we go. Say that three times fast. Padmasambhava. <laughs> Padmasambhava was referred to as the second Buddha. It was reported that he survived an execution by fire and then went on to perform many miracles, transforming those he met into protectors of the Dharma or the teachings of the Buddha. It's reported that he did not die. But instead, his students say that they saw him mount a beam of sunlight and soar into the sky amid swirling lights, becoming smaller and smaller until he disappeared. A fantastical sh story, sure. But how is that any more fantastical than a guy named Jesus rising from the grave and walking around visiting his disciples? One of the reasons that I left Christianity, and there are many, <laughs> was the insistence of a literal bodily resurrection of Jesus. Now, I, I believe it truly doesn't matter if he woke up in the tomb, reanimated in his flesh, stretched out the kinks, oh, threw off the shroud of Turin, <laughs> went outside and scared the women in the garden. I, I don't know. But something did happen that day. That, that I'm sure of. To me, though, the idea of Jesus assuming a rainbow body that makes a lot of sense to me. Some have reported the total disappearance of a body. There you go, we can explain the empty tomb. Others have reported appearances of their teacher after they assumed a rainbow body. They talked with them. They saw them ascend into the sky like Padmasambhava, which could be just what Jesus did, which was reported that he ascended to heaven in front of his disciples. As the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, Paul writes, there are also spiritual bodies. It all fits. It all makes sense to me then that if we are resurrected in bodies at all, they are spiritual bodies, glorified bodies. We have far more contemporary evidence of these spiritual rainbow body occurrences than we do of reanimated dead flesh getting up and walking around and ascending into heaven. That's enough to convince me, but everybody else, you're, you're free to choose. You're free to believe however you wish to believe this morning. Rainbow body or real body though, I believe what happened to Jesus' body that day is not the true miracle of resurrection. The true miracle of Jesus is not how he died or allegedly got up and walked around. It's how he lived. It's in his life that the miracles occur and the blueprint that he has left for us to follow to achieve what he did. And as he told us while he was here, to achieve even more than he did. Jesus, through his life and teachings, shows us how to practice resurrection 
not just here on Easter Sunday, but every moment of our lives. So when we think about great spiritual masters, from Buddha to Jesus and others, we may have an image of them like sitting on a mountaintop and meditating and om, om, you know, getting to enlightenment that way. And it's often why we convince ourselves we can never achieve such grandeur, such great, such greatness. You know, we got actual jobs and things to attend to, and we don't have time to sit around and wait for enlightenment like that. The real work of awakening, though, it's, it doesn't depend on the hours of meditation or prayer or yoga or any other physical practice. The miracle of awakening is simply a realization of who and what we truly are. We are innocent, beloved, children of the holy, and we are nothing but pure light. Like rays of the sun, we are not the sun, but we are an extension of it. We are made of the same light. We take these different forms for a little while, and then we are absorbed back into the sun when our form as a being passes away. That's why resurrection, or the rainbow body, proves that there's truly no death. The ray of sunshine does not die, it just returns to the sun when it no longer physically exists. Just like Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars. When Darth Vader strikes him down with the lightsaber, he doesn't die, he just returns back to the force from which he came. And the best thing is, he became stronger. Just like Jesus, just like Buddha. Just like Gandalf. Just like Gandalf. See? And Harry Potter. <laughs> it's a story for the ages. Why, why, are we not, why are we not celebrating Harry Potter's resurrection? Come on. We are. That's it. <laughs> so how did they do this? From Gandalf to Harry to everybody. How did they do it? Well, in bodily form, they're no different than any of the rest of us. But the one thing they realized was that none of us are different from anyone else. Yeah, we all got different backgrounds. We all got different opinions and experiences and worldviews and political beliefs, bodily features. Yeah, right. Okay. We appear different. What Jesus and all the other great masters did, though, was to look beyond all of that, past the ego's differences. And, and, and sometimes it's often distressing disguises that we use to protect ourselves. And it saw the light. They saw the light within all of us. We were all just these sunbeams walking around. So if you want to practice resurrection jubilance, today's reading from A Course in Miracles tells you exactly how. Think who your holy sibling is before you would condemn them. And offer thanks to God that they are holy and has been given the gift of holiness for you. Join them in gladness and remove all trace of guilt from their disturbed and tortured mind. Let us give redemption to each other and share it, that we may rise as one in resurrection and not separate in death. Behold the gift of freedom that I gave the Holy Spirit for both of you, and be you free together. As you offer to the Holy Spirit the same gift, and giving it, receive it of him and return in return for what you gave. So the key to practicing resurrection jubilance is to give up everything the ego holds dear. Fear, anger, hatred, grievance, jealousy, competition, judgment, despair, indifference. The difference between us and these great masters is that we still enjoy mucking about here in this world of egoic littleness and pettiness and competition. They gave all of that up simply by not condemning anyone and instead seeing the gift of holiness that everyone before, everyone before them brought to them. They didn't look around the world and see it full of terrible sinners in need of some blood sacrifice. They saw a world of people walking around in the unconsciousness of their egos, in need of a compassionate, holy sibling who would hold a vision of true beauty and innocence for them until they could see it for themselves. A course says, the message of the crucifixion is for us to teach only love, for that is what you are. The message of the resurrection, then, is to become that love, to be it. As you see your holy siblings wandering in the darkness of ego, which is what crucifixion is, 
You vow to teach only love to them, and in return you teach it to yourself. <clears throat> the resurrection then is the moment when you move from simply teaching love to embodying love in everything you do, everything you think, everything you say, every moment of your life until you achieve that glorified rainbow body. Now this to me is better news than one day being promised that I'm going to walk around in this particular flesh suit again. I'm a little tired of this one, you know? I've looked at this one for 50 some odd years now. I want that glorified body. I want to be the body walking around that shines those rainbow colors of love that radiates nothing but peace and joy and love and compassion and caring for everyone I meet, everyone I think about. That's lovely preacher, but how do you do that? Well, I know. I know, because I've talked to some of you. You struggle with this idea of meditation, and you know what? I do too. The instructions of just sitting there and trying to clear your mind of any thought or just trying to label it and let it pass, it can be hard, and I hear you. When this happens, though, we can be sure of one thing. We are trying to meditate with the ego and not with Holy Spirit. Because the ego wants you to do it right. And it berates you when you don't. You suck at this. Why are you doing it? You can tell your meditation partner is wrong in that minute. Because you're meditating with ego and you're trying to get it right. Meditating with the Holy Spirit, though. That brings joy. Because there's no right or wrong way to do it. It can be done in any moment of the day, any time. Whether you're in a crowd or by yourself. You can do it in the grocery store line. You can do it in the Walmart. You can do it when you're doom scrolling on Facebook. Why? When we get into that place where time and eternity kiss, when we get into this present moment right now, it's all we have. There's no past. It's already gone. You know, 11 o'clock is past. It's gone. Forget all about it. We're here. We're now. There's no future. We're making it up as we go along. It's a blank slate. We get there by simply paying attention to it, reminding ourselves amid the day's hectic comings and going that eternity waits patiently for us right now just to be noticed this is the field that that muslim mystic poet rumi talks about that's out beyond these egoic ideas of right doing and wrong doing out behind out beyond the hustle and the bustle of every day it can be the peace we feel in an instant or the peace we encounter in a, a beautiful sunset in the eyes of the puppy dog and our partner it's the moment that all thought stops. In every moment, we can choose to step outside the stream of thought that is always just threatening to sweep us away. I'll tell you, the, the moment I get into that no thought zone is when I'm ringing that bowl down there. I have to bring myself back. Or, I'm gonna, or you guys are just going to go, okay, she's in a trance. We're out of here. Because <laughs> I'll just be like, woo. <laughs> It's something about that tone. It just takes me right out of the stream of thought. I'm not thinking anything. And I have this, I have this tinnitus. It's never, it's never um, quiet in my head. It's never silent. It's always just ringing. And I am learning how to use the perpetual ringing in my ear as a bowl. And listen deeply to the ring. It's the same thing. It'll take me right out. I can do it right now. And it's just like, yeah, it's cool. I got, a, I got a singing bowl in my head. How, how, how lucky am I? <laughs> Blessing and a curse, I guess. You, you do with what you have, right? <laughs> but this is our practice of resurrection jubilance, getting into that gap between the thoughts, working on staying there for as long as possible, noticing those moments of no thought, stepping out of that stream of, of this earthly world into that stream of eternity just as often as we can remember to do. So how do we do that? We go to that field of unity with each other where the phrase each other doesn't even make sense anymore. How do we get there? Well, of course, says we ask God to do it for us. You see, this is not something we got to sit and do because that's what the ego wants. I gotta, I'm gonna, it's, it's, it's again, just seek but do not find. You're going to sit down and try to meditate and go, ah! <laughs> and so instead of sitting and meditating with the ego, ask God Ask spirit to meditate with you. A course says, God leads you and me together that we might meet here in this holy place and make the same decision. 
free your holy sibling here as I freed you. Give them the self-same gift and do not look upon them with condemnation of any kind. See them as guiltless as I look on you and overlook the sins that they think they see within themselves. Offer each other freedom and complete release from sin here in the garden of seeming agony and death. So will we prepare together the way unto the resurrection of God's Son and let him rise again to glad remembrance of God who knows no sin, no death, but only eternal life. The miracle of resurrection, jubilance, is when each of us who live in this world that we created together on a foundation of hatred surrenders all of our hatred and we step into the real world that is created and formed and teeming only with love. That's the miracle Jesus performed. Walking around in some glorified body even pales in comparison to the miracle of transcending a world built on hatred and fear and suffering and despair. But it's the miracle we're called to perform by practicing the resurrection, giving up our fear, giving up our anger, giving up the idea that we're suffering because we create that for ourselves. So I invite you, Jubilance, in this moment, step out of the stream of egoic thinking. It will keep you on that relentless treadmill of seek but do not find. Walk out of the tomb. Leave it empty. Let the world wonder where you have disappeared to. We can inhabit a glorified body of rainbow light right here and right now. We can be that beacon of love that shines in every moment because we learn how to touch and channel and embody that love by simply refusing to see those around us as irretrievably broken recalcitrants bent on doing evil in the world. I'm telling you, Walmart is your cathedral. <laughs> Go do it in the Walmart. And I'll tell you, the other day, I was in the, I was in the Kroger. I was pushing the guard around. Going, oh, they're right where I need to be. <laughs> and I'm like, breathe deeply. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the Christ standing in front of the in front of the peanut butter. <laughs> I'm like Christ needs to move. <laughs> so we're not going to do it perfectly. But I'll tell you, I, I I lifted my own spirits by like Christ, you're in front of the peanut butter. <laughs> oh Christ, is that you? Yeah. Right, and Christ doesn't have a peanut allergy, so not like Bruce, this other Christ back here who does. <laughs> but I'm saying, if you can walk around, even in those moments when you forget, make a joke. That's what I did. Christ, you're in front of the peanut butter. <laughs> It'll put you right back in the moment. Put me right back in the present. And I just had to stop and go, ah, oh, here I am. A ray of light amongst all these other rays of light. They don't know it, but I do, so I hold the space. I hold the space. The Course says you gotta give whatever's missing. I was missing peace in that moment, so I gave myself some peace. How about that? You can give it to yourself. Piece of peanut butter. Piece of peanut butter. Woo! <laughs> I know. <laughs> so you're not gonna do it perfectly. No, none of us will. But once you practice, Getting in between those, that gap between those thoughts. Noticing that place where you can recognize both yourself and everyone else as the radiant light of holy innocence. You get hooked. You want to see that more often. You get excited to go to Kroger or the Walmart. I'm going to see more light. Man, it's going to be great. <laughs> you remember the practice when you're at red lights during meetings. While you're shopping. Pretty soon, like Jesus, you're going to be performing true miracles. Releasing all the barriers to love. So we can flow through you and finally become you. And when you do lay down this earthly body, you'll be remembered by those you leave behind only for the rainbows of love that you showered upon them and the world. This jubilance is what it means to be alive in the world, practicing the resurrection in every moment. It means that everyone you see, everyone you speak to, 
everyone you think of in any given moment joins you out in that field of love beyond right doing and wrong doing. And you are out there lounging together in the grass of ultimate peace where even each other doesn't mean anything anymore. And all you'll know to say is, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So I wrote this song called Rainbow Bodies. Yeah, and it started off as a, because all I know how to write are folk songs. <laughs> and then the band got a hold of it and now it's a rock and roll song. All right, so we're gonna rock out on some rainbow bodies here. You guys ready? Ready? See? <laughs> Wash away our tears 
about smashing our instruments. But <laughs> <laughs> and having cute little rainbow figure bodies. Uh, <laughs> I like the Grateful Dead people. We need some psychedelic amoebas up on the screen <laughs> behind us. <laughs> uh, breathe deeply. Pax <sighs> like that song. No, Pax does not like that song. <laughs> he was like, ah, like he doesn't like rock and roll music. Yeah. And he's also <laughs> black and white, so he doesn't do rainbows. Right, he doesn't it's do rainbows, yes. Right. Oh, poor puppy. Poor puppy. See? Now he's like, oh, take me home. <laughs> he is. Except for his beautiful brown eyes. Breathe deeply. Got to bring it. I had Chat GPT write a write a write a, an, an Easter sermon <laughs> based on a course in miracles. It was pretty good. It wasn't bad. I mean, you know, there was no sort of oomph to it. It was just sort of, you know, right. It was kind of dry, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to post it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, all right. You you pass. You know, you got it. But and it is true. It is true that the forces of the world the forces of the ego world that we have created, it will try to stamp out love at every turn, you know. And, I, and it is, it is what got Jesus killed. He went against the power of the day. He went against the teachings of the day. You know, he talked to women and loved on Gentiles. and <laughs> You know, the dude went out and broke all the rules. And that's what we're called to do. We're not called to be crucified, though. That's what A Course in Miracles says. That's the last useless journey. That doesn't mean go out and, you know, don't go out and speak power to truth. It does. But to do it from that place of love. And yeah, you know, maybe your body gets killed doing something like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But don't walk around feeling like the world is crucifying you, because it's not. You crucify you. That's the, only, that's the only person out there crucifying you. If you think things are bad, if you think things aren't going well, ask to see things differently. Because that's what will create the spirit, the willingness to see more deeply. To be the one who is alive in the world, the one who stands to be counted. The one creating a new song in the world but you stand on a foundation of love, not on a foundation of fear. And that makes all the difference in the world. That's why we remember Jesus. We're like, dude could love, wow. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that, but you can. Jesus says, you have everything that I have. The only thing I don't have is an ego. The only thing I don't have is fear or grievance or anger or doubt, because the world ends in laughter. It doesn't end in despair. That is the celebration of Easter, that we think the crucifixion is the end, but we arise in laughter, in love, in peace, and in joy. And you can find that now. You don't have to wait. It's just giving up all the ideas of crucifixion. All the crucifixion means is teach only love, for that is what you are. If you want to learn what love is, go teach it, because you will find out. As you teach, so shall you learn. So you have a choice in every moment. Christ, is that you in front of the peanut butter? <laughs> or Christ is in front of the peanut butter. Look at how beautiful that ray of light is.
man, it's hard. <laughs> How long was that? Like 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of hours? All right. Well, just, hey, good on y'all for sticking around. <laughs> uh, so we have arrived at that point <laughs> where we ask that you humbly support us. We humbly ask that you support us. Well, support us humbly. That's fine, too. <laughs> Put my adjectives in the right place. Um, uh, you know, since we started the, the living room, um, you know, this, we're, we're, we're doing all right. The living room is, is asking it, it we're, is doing what we're asking it to do. If you look on the back of your bulletin, you'll see the financial report and, you know, uh, but it's also a lot of work as well. Um, you know, I have three full-time jobs now, so it's all good. <laughs> uh, but we do ask that you help support us because it is through the giving that we, that we collect here on Sunday mornings that we are able to provide this room for our, our amazing arts community and music community in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, it is for us on Sunday mornings. Um, you know, we're just, we're, we are being that light, that beautiful light that uh, shines here in Columbia. And uh, I'm gonna pass this around and y'all can pass that around. And I know some of you um, are using the QR codes or you can give online out there in uh, YouTube land. You can give online um, by going to jubileecircle.com and there's a donate button there and you can press that and it will take you to where you need to go to donate online. And you, if you like writing checks, you can write a check to, uh, and to Jubilee Circle and send it to post office box 4611 Jubilee, uh, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, sorry, 29240. And before I let the folks go, before I let the folks go out there, I do want to uh, give our <coughs> announcements, and then we'll go into our talk back here. Um, next week, Deb Barnes is going to be here to deliver the message uh, as we continue our practicing resurrection via Transformativa. Um, coming up this Tuesday and Thursday in this coming week, we're going to do our monthly after dinner cabaret series. We're going to start this um, with Clayton King and Vicki Say Henderson. They're going to do some uh, show tunes and some standard tunes for your enjoyment. We're going to have desserts and non-alcoholic beverages, but you can bring your own bottle if, or a box of wine, however you would uh, like to do. Um, this is going to be a uh, twice monthly event all the way through September, and we've got a lot of other good performers like Kevin Bush and Kathy Hartzog, Sam McWhite coming up in the coming months and it will always be in the second week of the month um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tickets are 20 bucks at the door. Uh, we also have them online. You can find a link at jubileecircle.com if you want to buy online. But that is coming up this Tuesday and this Thursday. And so please come and enjoy. They're going to put on an amazing and fabulous show here in the living room. Uh, we're also doing a night of comedy on uh, a uh, on April 21st, uh, Friday night at 6.30. Um, that's going to feature uh, Jen Snyder, Tomorrow Quest, uh, The Buster Cups, and Topher Riddle. Um, so it's going to be stand-up comedy and some improv. Tickets will be $10 at the door. Um, and again, snacks, non-alcoholic beverages, BYOB. Um, and, and for the cabarets, they start at 7.30. I don't think I said the time when I was talking about the cabarets. And we've got um, some other stuff coming up in the, the living room. Wombat Junction on May 26th, the Green Swamp, Collect Green Swamp Collective on June 2nd. Um, Still House will be here in September, September 15th. And I just booked a, a lady named Ash Devine for Friday, November 1st. Uh, no, 3rd, Friday, November 3rd. Um, so we've got bands lining up to get into the living room. So that's a good thing. Uh, Soundy School is 1030 every Sunday. Um, our Course in Miracles discussion group is at 730 every Wednesday. Anything I missed that I need to say? It's very busy here in this building. It's great. Come, come to these living room events. Some of these musicians are amazing. And the, the, um, the, uh, the, the comedy is going to be great. And the... the um, the cabarets, they're gonna be wonderful. We're gonna like put little tables out and it's just gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna change the whole atmosphere. And you see this curtain up here. Uh, we're gonna stretch this out and it's the, it's the living room oh. all on the curtain. So I, I don't know, I ordered it online, man. <laughs> well, yeah, Amazon's got everything. So we're gonna stretch that out so we can kind of just make the stage this up here and you know, you know where you're at, you're in the living room, so. Uh, come join us, especially. I think uh, the cabarets are going to be so much fun. So, Jen Snyder just started the 
Yeah, that's true. Jen Snyder is uh, Jen Snyder's amazing. She was she was voted. I guess it was uh, the three times. I guess or she's mm -hmm. uh, the best of. She's the best voted the best comic in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not gonna. Do that. Oh, that's right. No, <laughs> we're gonna do that afterwards. But I'm gonna say goodbye to the to them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for yeah well if you're watching out there and you have a band and you you think you want to play the living room we're an 80 seat listening room um we're not you know <coughs> there was a band here that kind of partied which was fine but <laughs> but we are sort of a listening room uh so you can you can actually send an email to booking at the living room sc as in south carolina.com booking at the living room sc.com okay there's a website too, thelivingroomsc.com. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna let the folks on uh, YouTube go and uh, we're gonna have a little talk back in the room. And if you ever wanna have a little talk back here in the room, you can join us in the room. Um, but we will see you next week. And remember, um, as Meister Eckhart says, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, if the only prayer you ever say your entire life is thank you, that will be enough because it puts you right in this present moment of gratitude. And so go in peace and gratitude and love and joy and we will see you next week. Oh yeah.